Have you ever pondered the dark secrets that lie beneath the grandeur of the Queen Mary ship? Picture a world where elegance meets adventure, where the thrill of the unknown is paired with the comfort of luxury. This was the world of the Queen Mary, a beacon of sophistication in the early 20th century. Her story begins in the bustling shipyards of Clydebank, Scotland. The year was 1934, an era defined by glamour and opulence, where the world's wealthy sought out the finest luxuries. And for those who had the means, the Queen Mary was the epitome of grandeur. A marvel of engineering, she was a beacon of hope in a world teetering on the brink of change. She was a symbol of British ingenuity and craftsmanship, a testament to the power of human imagination and determination. From her gleaming decks to her sumptuous cabins, every inch of the Queen Mary was designed with one purpose in mind, to provide an unparalleled experience of luxury and comfort. As she set sail on her maiden voyage, she carried with her a sense of optimism and promise. She was a floating city, complete with all the amenities one could ask for. Her passengers were a who's who of the world's elite, from Hollywood stars to royalty, all seeking a taste of the high life. Names like Clark Gable, Winston Churchill, and even Queen Elizabeth herself graced her passenger logs. It was an era of champagne toasts, black tie dinners, and moonlit dances on the deck. Yet for all her glamour and prestige, the Queen Mary was not just a symbol of luxury. She was a vessel of discovery, a gateway to new horizons. She represented the spirit of exploration, an adventure that defined the era. She was a testament to the human desire to push boundaries, to seek out the unknown and to conquer the world. But beneath the opulence, the Queen Mary harbored a chilling secret. As the world plunged into the chaos of World War II, the Queen Mary underwent a drastic transformation. This grand ocean liner, once a beacon of elegance and luxury, was called upon to serve a purpose far removed from her initial design. At the onset of the war, the British government recognized the strategic value of the Queen Mary. Her size, speed, and capacity made her a prime candidate for conversion into a troop ship. The process was not a simple one. It required stripping her of all the trappings of luxury she had been known for. The opulent suites, the grand dining rooms, the plush lounges, all were gutted and replaced with stark, utilitarian facilities designed to accommodate as many soldiers as possible. The lavish interiors were swapped out for bunks stacked seven high. The ballrooms and lounges, once filled with music and laughter, were now silent, save for the echo of marching boots. The ship's capacity was expanded to the point where she could carry as many as 15,000 troops at a time. The ship's transformation was not just physical. The Queen Mary, once a symbol of peace and prosperity, was now draped in a coat of battleship gray, earning her the nickname, the Gray Ghost. Her purpose had shifted dramatically. No longer was she the pride of the transatlantic travel, ferrying the rich and famous in comfort and style. Instead, she was now a lifeline, a critical part of the war effort, transporting troops across the dangerous waters of the Atlantic. Her transformation was a testament to the grim realities of war. The Queen Mary had to adapt, to take on a new role in a world at war. She was not alone in this, Many other luxury liners of her era underwent similar conversions, turning from symbols of opulence into vessels of war. The Queen Mary, once a symbol of luxury, was now a vessel of war. Her transformation was a stark reminder of the power of necessity and the lengths to which nations will go in times of conflict. The Queen Mary, now a troop ship, sailed into a sea of haunting tales. Her transformation from a grand ocean liner to a vessel of war was a perilous journey filled with chilling stories that continue to echo through the corridors of history. One of the most tragic tales is that of the fateful collision with the HMS Curacoa. It was October of 1942, and the Queen Mary, packed with over 10,000 troops, was sailing from New York to Scotland. The Curacoa, a British light cruiser, was assigned to escort her. However, a grave miscommunication led to a disastrous collision. The Queen Mary, with her enormous size and speed, sliced through the Curacoa, sinking her within minutes. Tragically, over 300 sailors lost their lives in the freezing Atlantic waters, but the chilling tales don't stop there. Throughout the war years, the Queen Mary carried over half a million troops. However, this massive undertaking was not without its casualties. The ship's makeshift infirmary was often overwhelmed with the wounded and sick. It was said that the death toll on board was so high that they had to convert one of the ship's emptied water tanks into a temporary morgue. 
These deaths, whether due to illness, injury, or the horrific accidents like the Curacoa incident, were a grim reality of the Queen Mary's wartime service. Each one added a layer of sorrow to the ship's illustrious history, a stark contrast to her pre-war days of luxury and grandeur. Despite these dark times, the Queen Mary soldiered on, serving faithfully until the end of the war. However, the scars of these haunting tales were deeply etched into her hull. The laughter and merriment that once filled her halls were replaced by the solemn silence of remembrance. These tragic events left an indelible mark on the ship, forever staining its history. As we delve deeper into the Queen Mary's dark past, we can't help but feel a sense of respect for this grand old lady of the sea, a silent witness to the horrors and heroism of war. The war ended, but the shadows of the past lingered on the Queen Mary. As the echoes of cannon fire faded into the annals of history, Queen Mary's role in the conflict was not forgotten. She returned to her earlier glamour and elegance, but with a new, eerie undercurrent. The ship, once a beacon of luxury and innovation and later a vessel of war, was now a floating enigma. In the post-war years, Queen Mary was refurbished and reimagined. The grandeur of her first voyages was recaptured. But the specter of war loomed large in her corridors. It was during these years that whispers of haunting and paranormal activities began to emerge. Though some dismissed these tales as mere sailor's yarn, others were not so quick to disregard the chilling accounts. Stories of ghostly apparitions and unexplained phenomena started to circulate. Passengers reported seeing figures in 1940s attire vanishing as quickly as they appeared. The sound of distant music, laughter and the clinking of glasses resonated in the empty ballroom, as if the ship were reliving her past parties. The comforting hum of the ship's engine could be heard even when the ship was anchored, a phantom heartbeat of the Queen Mary. Perhaps the most notorious of these tales revolves around the first-class swimming pool. Vacationers claimed to hear splashing and laughter, only to find the pool deserted upon investigation. The apparition of a young woman in a 1930s bathing suit was often spotted, appearing to enjoy a swim in the empty pool. These tales of the Queen Mary's spectral inhabitants have fascinated and terrified in equal measure. They serve as a haunting reminder of the ship's storied past, a past that refuses to remain silent. The Queen Mary, once a beacon of luxury and later a vessel of war, was now a haunted ship. Today, the Queen Mary serves as a floating testament to its tumultuous past. Anchored in the waters of Long Beach, California, this grand dame of the sea has found a new purpose. No longer cutting through the waves on transatlantic crossings or carrying troops to the front lines, the Queen Mary now stands as a beacon of history, a living museum and a floating hotel. Within her hull, guests can explore the opulence of bygone eras, walking through grand ballrooms and stately cabins that once hosted celebrities, dignitaries, and even royalty. This maritime marvel, once the epitome of luxury at sea, has been meticulously preserved, offering a glimpse into a world that has long since passed. But there's more to the Queen Mary than meets the eye. The echoes of its past aren't just confined to the historical exhibits and restored rooms. They seem to linger in the air, in the creak of the timbers, in the whispers of the wind through the portholes. They're there in the chill that sometimes descends without warning, in the shadows that seem to move of their own accord. Yes, the Queen Mary is said to be haunted, Reports of ghost sightings and unexplained phenomena are as much a part of her narrative as her maiden voyage or her service in the war. Guests and staff alike tell tales of apparitions, of eerie sounds in the night, of feeling a presence where none should be. Some say it's the spirits of soldiers who never made it home, others believe it's the lingering energy of the countless lives that have passed through her decks. Whether you're a believer in the supernatural or a staunch skeptic, one thing is undeniable. The Queen Mary is a vessel like no other. A ship that has witnessed the best and worst of humanity, that has played host to both joy and tragedy, and that carries the weight of its history with a quiet dignity. The Queen Mary, a ship with a dark past, continues to intrigue and mystify those who step aboard. If you enjoyed the video, please consider liking and subscribing as it helps our channel grow and continue to create new and interesting content. We encourage you to express your thoughts on the video in the comments and share our content with others.